Welcome scholars. I'm going to show you how to make a graph of your data using your data from the Superman Force Lab. So this is group 2's data from period 1 and we're going to graph applied force versus acceleration. Because force is our independent variable, it should go on the horizontal axis and acceleration is our dependent variable. It depends on force. So it's going to go on our vertical axis. That's pretty customary for making graphs. So what we do is first we're going to highlight this data for force. We're going to go to insert chart. We have to do um, we have to add a range here. So we're going to go to select ranges, add another range, and we're going to highlight the acceleration data. So now it knows we're looking at both of these columns for our data. Then we're going to go to recommended charts. None of these are really what we want. Almost always in science, when we want to see a relationship between two variables, we use a scatter plot. And this is a good choice. All right, we're almost done, actually. We just need to customize our chart. We need to give it a customized title. We need to label our axes. We need to, um, uh, let's see here. That's pretty much it. So let's go back to this tab right here, customize. Title, we can say, acceleration or maybe let's say effect of force effect of varying force on the acceleration of a cart all right um, now that's not the only way you can word it this would be another suitable way you might say force versus acceleration or an accelerating cart and um, the main thing is you want to have the variables somewhere identified in their title and you want to give it some context like for an accelerating cart. All right, now let's go down, keep scrolling to the horizontal axis title. That's force. We need to make sure we put in our units, newtons. And scrolling down to the continuing to scroll, we want to get to the vertical. So to do the vertical part, we click on this little drop down menu, left vertical, and then we do acceleration, parentheses, meters per second per second. All right, so let's see what we have going on here so far. Um, did it update that? There it goes. Maybe let's say that you wanted to have larger uh, labels. It's pretty easy to change. You just go back to here and you change it from 12 to, let's say, 14. And boom, gets bigger, go to horizontal, change it from 12 to 14, boom, gets bigger. And, you know, uh, you can do whatever kind of changes you want. You have color choices here. You can probably change the font, but I'm not seeing that. Oh, you're in number format, no, I'm not seeing that. Okay. Um, you can also change the color of your data points if you wanted to. By going into here, you can make them hot pink. You can change the size of those. Boom. You can change your scale. Usually we like to have 0, 0 for the origin because that usually is the best for seeing a mathematical relationship. Um, we can, let's see here, you know, you can mess around with your grid lines. You could add what are called minor grid lines. So um, if you have minor grid lines like this, I think in this case they're not really needed. It makes it look a little bit too busy. So let's get rid of those. And we can do that by putting minor back to zero. All right, so um, there is one thing left to do. You press insert. And there it is, but maybe that's not really where you want it, but you can just click on it. And then you can drag it around wherever you do want to put it, okay? And I'd like you to put it right under there. Um, one last thing though, we don't really need a legend in this case because a legend is really if you have multiple data sets being shown in one graph. So let's go to clear legend. That looks better. Um, okay, I'll see you guys in class.